Hi my lovely fam, welcome back to my channel Beyond Passions. My name is Princess. If you're here for the very first time, I welcome you. Please do not leave without subscribing. Please press that subscription button and the bell of notification on your right hand side for more videos. I welcome you all. My channel is about family and lifestyle, spoken word, indoor fitness, soothing and relaxing music with psalms and prayers. In today's edition, I'm going to be talking about something that has been bothering a good number of people. A young lady called me some time ago and she was bothered about a number of things, one of which was that she was being mocked by the people she knows. And when these people mock her, they make it obvious, it is obvious that she is the one being mocked. These are supposedly friends. The social media is full of all kinds of stuff. The good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> Pun intended. When you open your social media pages, if you are not disciplined and if you don't discipline your mind, you allow all types of trash come into your mind. And some of these things are really damaging. For example, the mockery that, that I'm talking about. Now, what can you do to avoid seeing these things on social media? My dear, these things will always be there. Mockery, savages, savage messages they are all there good ones are there inspiring messages are there inspiring videos are there motivating videos are there videos that will help you develop yourself they are all there well the thing is you really have to discipline your mind to pick what will benefit you per time you see the whatsapp status contains a lot of messages and a lot of people have decided to mock other people or rather to mock their friends whom they know that go through their status whom they know will definitely see the messages they post on their whatsapp status particularly you see you spend the same amount of data the same amount of energy to type a mocking message against your friend as you would also spend to type an uplifting message that someone can read and get uplifted. It's the same way, the same amount of energy that you can also use to type or to display your motivational messages to display messages that your friends will read and and they would like oh this is thought provoking inspiring positive vibes if you have decided to spend your time mocking other people typing messages that make other people think think about their lives some who cannot endure it go commit suicide it's up to you what you would like to spend your money and your data for what you would like to spend your energy for but for people like you my dear i am making reference to this because there are other people out there who are going through what you are going through and I know that I spent hours talking to you and I know that what I told you 
you're using it and is impacting you. So I'd like to use this edition to also say some things to people who might be going through the kind of things that you, that you, you went through. Perhaps it might also help them. Now, does anyone remember the story of Elkanah who had two wives, Hannah and Penina? That story, the wife, Penina, had many children and it was their custom in Israel those days to go up to Jerusalem to offer sacrifice once every year. So in so doing, families cook and come with all kinds of stuff. People who have children, they make merry and it's one happy family and all of that. But this man, Elkanah, had two wives. Penina had many sons. Hannah had none. So, Penina decided that every year she was going to tease Hannah and mock her because she had no child. So every year they would go up for the sacrifice, Penina and her sons. And Hannah had no child. This went on and on and on until Hannah could not take it anymore. She started praying for her own children. She started talking to God about the mockery. And one particular year they went up for sacrifice. And in the morning, Hannah decided to go into the church and pray. The pastor, well, referred to as the priest, was sitting by the door and observed the woman. Her mouth was moving, she was crying, she was praying furiously, frantically, talking to God about her situation. Thereafter, the priest called her. The priest was wondering what kind of woman is this? Is she drunk? at these early hours of the day. And the priest decided to talk to her. What is it that could make you get drunk at this time of the day? And the woman had to correct the pastor that no, that she was a woman of sorrowful heart. She was not drunk. She was only pouring her heart to God because of the sorrow in her heart, because of what she was going through. She had to explain to the priest what she was going through and what caused her sorrow so. That year, Hannah made a promise to God, if you would give me a son, I would dedicate the son back to you. God answered her prayer. A year later, she had a son, Samuel whom we all know as Samuel, who became the popular prophet in Israel. It was Samuel whom God sent to anoint David as king of Israel. So Samuel's name is in the Bible. Samuel has two books in the 66 books of the Bible. Samuel has two books, first and second Samuel. We hear about Samuel today. Samuel was the son of Hannah, that woman who was constantly mocked every year because she had no son at the time. Now, what about Penina and her children? How many of those children do we read their books in the Bible today? You see, one thing about people's mind when it's going well for you. When things are going well for you, seemingly going well for you, everything is going well for you, and you have friends or people you call friends or siblings or people around you or acquaintances or associates. And somehow the things that are happening for you 
aren't happening for them. Therefore, you decide that you are going to spend your energy in mocking these people. You post messages on your status, on your WhatsApp status, on your social media pages, mocking these people. You forget that you are not your own creator. You did not create yourself, sister, brother. You did not create yourself and you did not create that person that you are mocking. Those messages that you send, those messages that you send indirectly, those mockeries that you send indirectly, that you joke about, that you laugh about, those are heavy messages that you are sending out there and you do not know how they affect other people because things are seemingly going well for you. I cannot tell you how to use your devices. I cannot tell you how to use your data. But I can tell you that I read messages. I read some messages from the social media. Not everything because you have a lot of trash there and you have a lot of good educating informative materials out there would you not rather be better if you put up messages that uplift other people would you not be better if you put up messages there that those friends whom you know are reading those messages is it not better to put out things that will rather uplift their spirits instead of kill them just because you want to mock them think about what you have right now that was not given to you what do you have that was not given to you You have a good job, you have a good source of income, and you claim you are independent, you work hard. You're not the first person to work hard. You're not the first person to have a good job. You're not the first person to have a good source of income. You are not the first to have things going well for you. What do you have that you did not receive? What do you have that was not provided for you by God, by the grace of God? When you put out such messages, you forget that the same almighty God who gave you those things, He is seeing everything that you're doing, that is going on, that is happening for you and happening for your friends, whom you are mocking. Do you not think that as Hannah cried to God. When your friend sees the mockeries, the taunting messages, the messages that are meant to kill their spirits, to kill them, to mock them, when they see such messages and cry out to God, do you think God is not faithful enough to also bless them? For you, Dear one, who goes through mockery and you know you are going through mockery? Look, you don't have to listen to everything out there. You don't have to allow the things that you see, the things you hear, the mockeries. You don't have to allow that to get to you. Do not allow the mockeries to get to you. Do not allow what people are saying to disturb your own sound mind. Do not do that. When you do that, you should change yourself. Do not listen to such things. Do not read such things. If possible, block such people whom you know that are mocking you so you don't see their status anymore. So you don't see their messages anymore. 
if you know that you're constantly getting messages from a particular source and that source is constantly disturbing you why not block out that source and have your own peace of mind do not listen to such things instead take your worries up to God you know God is God is so faithful so kind he's so good that his hands are not short to also bless you. The way he has blessed your friends or blessed those people that are mocking you, at the right time, at the fullness of time, don't you think God is faithful enough to also bless you? Do not take the mockeries to heart. Keep on praying and keep on trusting God and keep on believing. I tell you, that when your own blessings will come, they will come with bonuses. They will come so that you will know that it is God who blesses. And that when God blesses, He adds no sorrow with it. Be encouraged not to post mocking messages as well. Be careful not to post retaliatory messages not to be vengeful not to try to avenge yourself just focus on god focus on the things that will benefit you if you're in school focus on your studies finish up if you're working focus on your life focus on your work if you go to church, focus on the word of God, not gossips. Focus and focus on your God. Take your prayers, take your supplications to God and the God of peace will multiply peace to you. The God who blesses and adds no sorrow will bless you. And when God blesses you, do not rejoice and say, Oh, God has blessed me over my enemies. Just praise God for blessing you and forget about the enemy part of it. Forget about, Oh, God has shamed my enemies. No. God could have blessed you and shamed your enemies. But I am saying, when you are blessed, Praise God for blessing you and leave the enemy part of it. You did not fight those enemies. You did not fight your fight. Trust God to fight your fights for you. Allow God to be God in your life. Praise God and bless God and leave the fighting of the enemies for him to do. He knows how to handle that. He knows how to deal with that. If God puts your, those your enemies into your hands, would you know how to handle them? Of course not. It's not everything you would know how to handle without committing sin yourself. Therefore, trust God to bless you. For when God blesses, He adds no sorrow with it. Trust God for a sound mind. Focus on asking God for those things, those specific things that will benefit you. And when he does, bless him and praise him and forget about the other parts that some people say, oh God has shamed their enemy and just praise God. Praise God. God bless you because he wants to glorify himself in your life that is the reason so young man young woman take heed what you put out on social media take heed that you do not mock other people take heed that you do not take messages intended for mockery you don't take them to heart. 
take heed that such messages do not affect your life and deprive you of the happiness that God has already provided for you. You know, God's grace is sufficient for us all. <laughs> God's grace is sufficient for everyone. Remember the things I have just said and stay blessed. Stay safe. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.